So today's notes is all about solving equations. Um, this is going to be solving equations that could have negative numbers, could have variables on both sides. Because we solved two step equations already, this gets a little bit more complex. So a number sentence with a variable is neither true nor false until you enter a value for the variable. So we saw this back when we were in Unit 6 originally. A number sentence when you have, you know, you know, the equality or an equal sign and stuff on each side. You can't say if it's true or false if there's a variable in there. If you find values, so sometimes it's one value, sometimes it could be like any number plugged in, like uh, 0 times x equals 0. You can plug in anything for x and that would be true. So it could be more than one value, typically it's just one value. To make the open number sentence true, then you have found solution or solutions in the case of something that has more than one thing that could work out to solve the equation. So if it says x squared equals 9, that has two answers. x could be 3 or x could be negative 3. So therefore it has two solutions. But usually we only have one solution at this point. Now, if we have a slightly more complicated equation like we just saw on that virtual manipulative site, where we have a variable appears on both sides of the equation, we're going to use that pan balance model to put all variable terms on one side of the equation, and constants, the number part without the variable, on the other side of the equation. For the uh, example here, we have 2x minus 9 equals 4x plus 3. So if we're using that model, which I think this one could actually, let's see, I'm going to bring up that website, and I'm going to create a new problem. No, create a problem, sorry. I'm going to have, oh, I don't know if it's going to let me use their keyboard. I'm going to have 2x's minus so you can make up your own problems on this website to try it out. Or if you have a homework problem where the numbers aren't too large, you could plug in the numbers and try it that way. So 2x minus 9 equals 4x plus 3. So with this model, visually, it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I think I got them, but we'll see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3 of those. Yeah. So I have 2x minus 9 equals 4x plus 3. Same problem that we're going to look at in our notes. Who has an idea what the first thing you might do would be in order to get all your x's on one side and all your non-x's on the other side? What do you think you want to do? Um, subtract, wait, subtract, uh, Not subtract 2, but subtract 2x's, right? Okay. Subtract 2x. So our first step here, I'm going to subtract 2x to get rid of the x's on this side. So a typical strategy is whatever side has more x's, make that your x side and get rid of the x's that are on the other side. But to keep it balanced, I have to subtract 2x over here as well. Who can tell me what my new equivalent equation would be? I essentially end up having this become 0 minus 9, and then I have to subtract that as well. What do you think the equivalent equation is going to be? Yes, ma'am? X minus 9 Nope, we just got rid of all the x's. Right? That was the point of her telling us to get rid of 2x. So 0 minus 9, how would you write 0 minus 9? Send you to the number line. Zero minus go down nine. Um, negative three. Yep, negative nine on this side. And what do we get on the right hand side? Two x plus three. Two x plus three. So you have to show doing the same thing to both sides what your equivalent equation becomes. And on that pan balance model over here, I have to go to my computer because I didn't like the keyboard over there. We're gonna do. 
that same thing, subtracting two lowercase x's, and we get the same negative 9 equals 2x plus 3. Fantastic. So again, you can play around with this website to try to get a, a feel for it. Now at this point, to find the value of x, we're going to do the opposite, I'm going to say inverse operations, in the opposite order. Now it's just become a two-step equation. So who can tell me how we can undo this adding 3? We're going to want to undo adding 3 how? Uh, you do minus 3. We're going to subtract 3. We're going to do minus 3. And again, we have to do it on both sides to keep it balanced. So what's our new equivalent equation going to be after we do minus 3 on each side? If I subtract 3 from each side, what's my new equivalent equation going to look like? It's in the back. Um, negative 12 equals 2x. Negative 12 equals 2x. Let's prove it back over on this thing. So jump that down. We subtract 3 from each side. I think we got negative 12 equals 2x. Go back over to this website. Subtract 3 from each side. It's already on the subtract. Good. Let's subtract 3. No, you can't subtract 3 because it won't fit on the scale. <gasps> the numbers get too big. Tarn tootin. All right, so that's not one we can do on that website. She yelled at me right away then. It would work. We would get negative 12 would pound the only handle 10 units. We get negative 12 wounds on one side, and we have still two x's on the other side. So now we have to get rid of multiplying by 2. Who can tell me how we can get rid of multiplying by 2? Kids, man. We're going to divide by 2. And remember, sometimes you see this more often than divide by 2, divide by 2. But you can still write it with your other division symbol if that's your preference. But you're going to see this more and more often. So who can tell me what our new equivalent equation, which ends up being our solution. Yes, ma'am? Negative 6 equals x. Negative 6 equals x is our proposed solution. If you carefully do it step by step, you're going to get negative 6 equals x. Now, here's the thing. You don't have to do this next step, but it helps if you're not confident. You can check your solution by plugging in the value for the variable and computing each side. So over here, I have 2 times negative 6 that you think we found minus 9. Over here, I would have 4 times the negative 6 that we found, plus 3. So who can tell me what 2 times negative 6 equals? It's 2 times negative 6. Yes, sir? Negative 12. Negative 12. So over here, I'm going to get negative 12 minus 9. So order of operation comes in again. Right? I had to do the multiplication before the subtraction. And who can tell me what I get when I have negative 12 and I go down 9 more? Negative 12 minus 9. Yes, sir? Negative 21. On the right hand side, I need someone to tell me what 4 times negative 6 equals. 4 times negative 6? Negative 24. Negative 24, excellent. Plus 3. So if I was down negative 24 and I went up 3, where would I be? What would I get? negative 21. Our goal is that we want the left-hand side to end up equaling the right-hand side when we think we found a solution. Met the goal. So everybody's notes should have all this filled in. Everybody's notes should have every step filled in. Hmm, yours looks a little different than mine. But even so, you should have this whole solving by doing this thing on each side. And then it says there's often more than one way to solve, one valid way to solve an equation. So I'm just giving a pausing moment for everybody to catch up on the notes. So we could take that same equation that we had before, 2x minus 9 equals 4x plus 3. And someone might not yet know that strategy of making the x side the one that had more x's to begin with. They might have started by saying, you know what, I hate seeing negative signs, even if it just means subtraction. I'm going to get rid of the minus 9 first. 
because they just freaked out by negatives. They're going to have to deal with them anyway. But, so if we scroll down, I have to clear the ink and scroll down. Then we will find that if someone wanted to get rid of that minus 9 at their first step, by adding 9 to each side, what would their next equivalent equation be? Try adding 9 to each side, what do you get? What's our new equivalent equation when we add 9 to each side? Minus 9 plus 9, clearly oh. not, that's the whole reason we're trying to get rid of it. So 2x yes. equals 12, 4x plus 12. Excellent, 4x plus 12. So this person basically was like, oh, I hate negatives, negatives, negatives. But then they found themselves in a jam, because now they essentially made the right-hand side their non-x side, which means their left-hand side has to become their x side. So now they have to subtract 4x to get rid of the x's on their non-x side. So by doing that, they kind of end up making them have to have a negative coefficient at some point. So who thinks they know what the new equivalent equation would be? 2x and then minus 4x is going to equal something on their right-hand side. What's 2x and minus 4x? Negative 2. Well, negative 2 amount of x's. So don't lose your x's. This got canceled away. So what's left on the right-hand side? What's left on the right-hand side if this got canceled away? 12. Just the 12. And so how do I get rid of multiplying by negative 2? How do I get rid of multiplying by negative 2? I divide each side by negative 2 and again. You can use this type of division sign if you prefer. So it's still an option. Push it. And who can tell me what 12 divided by negative 2 would be? So we'll go back to those oh, negative positive rules. Bad thing, good character. No, good thing, bad character, good thing, bad character. X equals negative 6. The same answer as before, but just a different way to get there. So the gist of it is to make equivalent equations, you've got to make sure you always do the same computation to both sides, or to each side. I don't know, I can change these way on the this. Each side of the equation. You've got to keep it balanced. You've got to, always got to show, I'm going to add 9 to each side, I'm going to subtract this from each side, I'm going to divide this on each side, and so on.